No mas, no mas, no more, no mas. Nicholas Axeman Walters and uh, the the um, end of the eighth round decided he didn't want it anymore. He was he, he pulled a Roberto Duran. You know, history repeats itself. You know, um, it's ironic because he was the one with the power. Um, you know, he couldn't deal with the punching and the angles. He couldn't deal with it. But I am disappointed in Nicholas Axeman Walters because I did have it. I did anticipate it being um, more of a more of a chess match. First round, you know, uh, Nicholas Walters kept his guard high. He didn't give Lomachenko anything to work with. You know, he jabbed and looked for openings when the jabs were, you know, when the openings weren't there, he didn't do anything. A lot of times he went to throw and didn't throw. He should have threw anyway. Um, he should have worked the body. It was a lot of things that he could have done. But what he shouldn't have done was quit. You know, because, it, you know, one thing about a fighter like Lomachenko, he loves his craft. He's very special. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I mean, he's special. He's a special fighter. But <clears throat> him and other fast, speedy fighters that are that that punch in volumes like him, Manny Pacquiao, etc. These guys, they really get uh, they drop their guard when you know when they're scoring points. You know that makes them more vulnerable. Look, look what happened with Manny Pacquiao and Jesse Vargas. When Manny Pacquiao dropped Vargas, he 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 got careless. Just like Lomachenko tonight. I mean, it was very, very, very trivial. You know, it was a small opening, but uh, but the believe in the um, uh, believe in the sixth round, Walters caught him with a pretty good hook that made him cover up. But it was because Lomachenko, you know, was uh, you know, letting his hands go. He was doing he was doing a lot more, and he was getting a little cocky. So when you get a little cocky, you could have openings over, you know, and it looks like the fight was just about to begin. Someone was going to get knocked out. Nicholas Walters, he blamed he hadn't, hadn't fought in a year. Well, he shouldn't have took a fight like this if he wasn't ready, you know. Um, but Laman Chico was faster. He stayed closer to Nicholas Walters because Nicholas Walters had to reach. He had to reach, so he stayed out of uh, range of his punches. You know, so he stayed closer since his reach was shorter, which was smart, very smart. You know, he stayed in his range. Um, Lomachenko, uh, he kept his right foot right outside of <clears throat> of Walter's um, pivot foot, forward foot, you know, and um, he just, just did, gave him a boxing lesson, dude. It was a boxing lesson. And it was one of those things that makes you know that Lama Chico should, like I said before, climb the living, breathing ar organism of the pound, top 10 pound for pound. Because he's definitely top 10. And, you know, it, it, it's funny, it's ironic, because now you look at a fight like Lama Chico Walters. Um, you're asking yourself, what's, what, what else is for Lama Chico besides move up? Challenge yourself. Because, you know, I mean, he's just that good. You know, and I think if he wants to be what he says he is, or sets out to be, he should do exactly what Manny Pacquiao did. My opinion. I don't. I don't. I don't say he should go up to 147, but he. You know, I think for said and done, he should be somewhere around that. You know, 140 and 147. You know, I think 147 should be his cap. You know, and then he could do a lot there. You know, I don't know if his his body frame will support that type weight, but you know. He's still a young guy, and he's you know with that type of gift and that punching power, and it, I mean he doesn't really have that a lot. You know he can crack now, he can crack, but his his punchings are more surprising. You know, um, it's just I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised on how this fight ended. You know, I was anticipating a twelve round fight or some couple knockdowns. You know, <clears throat> but it was crazy. You know, and. Um, And I look at, if you compare this to the fight, the big pay-per-view fight last week, you know, this is how a lot of boxing experts, a lot of boxing forums predicted Ward to beat Kovalev with the, with, with the you know, with the gift. So that just amplifies the fact that Kovalev and Ward was that, these guys were the, on this level, neck and neck versus this fight, you know, 
didn't hold a candle to this fight with talent versus talent. Nicholas Walters, he didn't want him anymore. And he said, well, I was holding on anyway. He just, hey, he just saved people the trouble. But I'm still, you know, you don't do that in a championship fight, dude. You don't do it. You know what I mean? Moving up in weight or whatever, a year layoff, you're giving excuses. Excuses are like, you know what, assholes. And everybody has one, and he had a couple. So, you know, he had a couple assholes tonight. You know, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have stopped that fight like that. Go out on your shield. You know, because a lot of fights, you know, that a referee stopped the fight. So the corner stops the fight, not the fighter. In this situation, the fighter stopped the fight. So, you know, it's crazy, man. And I, I really just, uh, I'm really disappointed in Nicholas Walters. You know, and in, like he said, well, HBO only gives me one fight a year. Uh, well, what do you think they're going to give you now? You know what I mean? What do you think in store for you now? They gave you a, a, a draw with Sosa. You know, and that was your last fight down there a year ago. So what do you think they're going to do when you quit on the stool? That's bad for business. That's bad for promotions. That's bad for everything. You should have just let the Lama Chico knock him out if, if that was if he was on his way to a knockout. Go out on your shield. You know, because that's not how you do it. Roberto Duran, he won a fight with Leonard already. You know, he did that in the second fight because he didn't feel like fighting no more. He felt his expectations, he's already achieved. So in the second fight, he didn't want to fight no more. He was like, no mas. You know, Nicholas N Nicholas Walters, the axe man, he's not on that level like he was, like <clears throat> Duran was. You know what I mean? And it's ironic that they both live in Panama. Nicholas Walters is not in, not from Panama, and, but he lives in Panama. You know what I mean? He reps Panama. You know, so that, that, that just shows you that's a big stink on Panama, you know, you know, the country of no mas, right? It's crazy. So, I mean, the fight was going good. You know, Lama Chico, you know, he's on his way to stardom, you know, and um, and <clears throat> he's moving up the rankings in a couple years. I see him at 140. I don't see him stand at 130. There's no one there. Who's there at 130? You know, I would love to see him fight Rigadao, somebody with some gifts, some speed. And, you know, and Rigadao, he's a small guy. He's not moving anywhere. He's not going anywhere. You know, I, I think Rigadao should get the money, fights, and retire. I don't see him doing anything else in the sport of boxing because nobody really wants to fight him. You know? Nicholas Walters was a good substitute, but really, how good was the substitute? How good was it? You know, because <laughs> he made Nicholas Walters quit. With the speed, with the skill, with the dedication of the, you know, with, with, with the special gift that he possesses, he made Nicholas Walters, an undefeated fighter, quit. So, Lomachenko should just move up. He should keep winning. Well, I, I well actually, I would get the rematch with our, uh, Orlando Salido. I would do that. You know, what I mean, and even though I think he beat Salido. But Salido, but that's how you be. If you're gonna win against Lamin Chico, that's how you win. You make it a dirty fight. You make it a murky fight. You don't fight fair. You do what you need to do. You throw punches. You go to the body like 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 great Mexican fighters do. You you make that happen. And that's exactly what Orlando Salido said. But I do take my hat off to Orlando Salido, and he did say before this fight, <clears throat> um, he would want to fight. Uh, Laman Chico again, you know, so he can get avenge his, you know, his loss because it is a loss. It is a stench on his record, you know. So, it is a derrota. So, what do you want to do about it? You want to fight. So, anything he needs to get in there back with him and make that fight happen. So that's one thing he could do before he ever wants to do anything else. That's what I would do. That would have been my next fight, being a fighter. To the mag magnitude of Lamachenko. You know, the guy is something special. You know, and I, I was just in awe because I thought it was just going to be like a um, chess match. But uh, it looked like um, a landslide win. And that's exactly what it was. But anyway, this is Kurt DeVille wrapping it up. Uh, and you've been counterpunched. Peace.